In this video, I'll be talking about what I've found to be the best and easiest way to sift through and organize footage. I'll walk you through a few different techniques depending on what kind of project you're working on, so let's get into it. There's really no right or wrong way to sift through and organize footage. Everybody has their own style, and what works for a lot of people is different than what works for someone else. But if you want to replicate my style and the way that I do things, then I'll walk you through my preferred way to sift through and organize footage. And I'm going to give you an example of doing this with a wedding video, a commercial, and a music video because each process is different. So with a wedding video, how I would do it is I'll start with importing all my footage into my timeline, and usually with wedding videos, I'll usually have around an hour of footage, and I'll have to edit that down into a five minute video. So the first step is I'll go through and watch all of the footage, taking out all of the unusable footage, keeping all the good footage, and then highlighting all of my favorite footage by pressing T, which changes the color of those clips to mango. And if you want to figure out how to do that, check out my keyboard shortcuts video where I show you how to change that keyboard shortcut to highlight clips. After doing this, I'll usually end up with about 10 minutes of footage, which is still too much for a five minute video. So I'll go through this footage again and be even more strict now, only selecting the very best footage and whittle it down to around six minutes. You always want to have just a little bit more footage because as you're editing to a song, you'll cut some of the clips as you edit to the music of the song, so you'll need a little bit of extra footage because you know that you'll be cutting some clips down when you edit to the music. And from there, once I've selected my top six minutes of footage, I'll then build out a story and make sure that I have a good variety of cutting from a wide shot to a medium or a close-up shot, and then cut between wides, mediums, and close-up shots, keeping in mind that I will almost never cut from a wide shot to another similarly looking wide shot, or cut from a tight shot to another similarly looking tight shot. Now, what I do for music videos is completely different. For music videos, I usually have performance shots and then b-roll shots. So I'll take all the performance shots and I'll stack them on top of each other and synchronize them to the audio track, and then I'll go through each track one by one and take out all of the unusable footage and highlight all the best footage. Then I'll go through the whole song five to ten seconds at a time, and I'll create a master track above all the tracks where I'll then choose my favorite clip and bring it up to the master track, again cutting between wide, medium, and close-up shots, and having a good variety of each. Then I'll go through all the b-roll if I have any, and I'll delete all the unusable footage and highlight all the best footage, and then I'll stick those b-roll clips into any empty spaces if there's no performance shots that I like for those sections, or if I like a b-roll clip better than a performance shot, then I'll replace the performance shot with a b-roll shot. And for commercials, these videos are usually a little bit more scripted, and I have an idea of what the edit will look like either before before we shoot or as I'm shooting, so there will be either a voiceover, and I'll just put in shots of whatever the voiceover is talking about, or I'll put the shots in whatever order the story goes depending on how the story of the commercial is. So as a general rule of thumb for each video, step one is to delete all your unusable footage, highlight the very best footage, and then organize your footage to where there is a mixture of wide, medium, and close-up shots. But that's it for this video, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.